<clears throat> Here's a question for you. Minerva from FE1, Sias from FE5, Eliwood from FE7, and Titania. What do all of these characters have in common? If you guessed flaming red hair, congrats, you're completely wrong. You think? The answer is they're playable in Awakening. Duh. If you're a real old school video gamer like myself, you may remember bits and pieces of Awakening's now defunct spot pass feature, where you can fight and recruit bonus characters, more commonly known as. uh. Inheriars. Okay, that's what I'm going with. Inheriars. <coughs> From all the older Effie games. There's 120 of them in total, including playable units, bosses, and NPCs. What's super cool though is that every single character has at least one personal skill, a skill that their respective class lines don't have access to. Often this references skills they had in their original appearance, such as Nefany having Wrath, Arden having Vantage, and Nana having Charm. Often this can also reference their original appearance in a less direct way, such as Avil sporting Miracle, a nod to her hidden immortality buff in the early game of Thracia. On account of his shrewd tactician-ness, Soren has a Robin's veteran skill. On a similar vein, Sias has Rally Spectrum, referencing his million leadership stars on account of his brilliant tactical ability. Aira has move plus one, I guess, as a response to me after I dissed her movement in that other video. <laughs> Marth has a rightful king, because uh, he's a king. Yeah. He could just have that one. Marissa has the skill Tantify, which boosts hit and avoid if she's alone, which I thought kind of fits her introverted personality. Inez has Dual Guard Plus, which I think may be a reference to his support with Erika, where he's like, I will protect you with my bow. And she's like, uh, whatever. And they get married at the end. Others don't reference anything in particular, but are pretty interesting nonetheless. For instance, Shanna has Lucky 7, which boosts her hit and avoid by 20 for the first 7 turns. Of all the 120 Einherjar, try to guess which 3 have the female exclusive Gale Force skill. Well, you're wrong. It's Camus, Jafar, and Jamke. Uh, don't ask me why. Lu and Rei, I guess, are big Tormod fans and have move plus one. Horus has both Rally Defense and Rally Resistance. Ishtar has Astra for some reason, I don't know why. Zephiel has Conquest, Wallheart's unique skill which protects from all forms of effective damage. And then there's Amelia, who just has luck plus four. How boring. When you summon these guys onto the overworld, they can be recruited by buying them outright or fighting their teams, which again, are filled to the brim with references. Most main lords fight alongside their original retainers from chapter 1 of their respective games. For instance, here's Sigurd's team. What's funny is that many of these characters default to paladin in lieu of their original classes, but Ethlyn, who actually promotes into a paladin, is a Valkyrie instead, because paladins can't use staves in this game. Here's Erika. Mars classic team. Legion obviously just has his clones or the brothers or whatever. Marse somehow managed to recruit both um the guys, the axe guys, the fighters, yeah, those guys. Minerva fights alongside her white wings. Nino's got her black fang friends. Laxis has her three cross knight guys. Awakening says Amelia is good in general. Avel is accompanied by a bunch of axe guys and then also some bow knights, which is kind of like a glimpse into her past. If you know, you know. I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. Lastly, the coolest one may just be Nurgles, whose team consists of the named morph bosses in FE7's endgame. They're even sorted in the order that their door is open too. I love the attention to detail on this one. It's clear that developers put a lot of effort into this system, which makes sense when you remember that Awakening was supposed to be the final game in the franchise. And yet, it wasn't. So here we are.